Welcome on board the Blue Water FPSO Hewin Brim. This briefing explains the basic safety and emergency procedures that must be followed during your stay on board. Blue Water wish you a pleasant stay in a safe environment. We advise you take an active part in safety at work and follow the vessel safety rules. Howween Brim is a floating production storage and offloading vessel, or FPSO. The vessel is attached to a turret, which is moored to the seabed by eight anchors. The vessel rotates around the turret, allowing it to normally face into wind. Blue Water take the safety and well-being of personnel on board very seriously. Safety is everyone's responsibility. Incidents are preventable and can be avoided. They don't just happen, they are caused. By working together as a team, we can ensure the vessel is a safe place to live and work for everyone on board. As with all oil and gas installations, major accident hazards for this vessel have been identified and assessed. The asset safety case contains full details of these major accident hazards, including those which can result in a major environmental incident. The safety case identifies the barriers, or SECEs, safety and environmental critical elements, in place to prevent, detect, control and mitigate these hazards. Your actions whilst on board, in following company procedures, adhering to the permit to work system and reporting hazards, are a key barrier in major accident hazard prevention. When you arrived, you were given a T card, an induction questionnaire, a declaration form and a safety and emergency information card. This details your cabin and bunk number, your safety constituency, designated lifeboat number and your primary and alternative muster stations. Keep this card with you at all times. The accommodation is on six levels. At the top is the bridge, control room and heli admin. Below that is D-Deck, which has the offices, the conference room and the 500 cabins. C-Deck has the 400 cabins, B-Deck the 300 cabins, library and EHQ. On A-Deck you'll find the galley, clean rec rooms, smoking and non-smoking and coffee shop corner, as well as the dirty smokers and telephone booths. The locker room is also on this level. The upper deck has the medic, laundry and gym. This level also gives access to the main deck. Following this video, you will be given a tour of the vessel. You will be shown your main and alternative muster points. Place your tea card at your assigned muster point. Remember to remove this when you leave the vessel. On your tour, you will see a number of instruction notices located throughout the vessel. Read them all carefully. The station bill details emergency actions as well as the different alarms that will be transmitted throughout the vessel in an emergency. You'll find the station bill inside your cabin and on your safety and emergency information card. The vessel has three freefall lifeboats, two on either side of the accommodation and one aft on the starboard side. Davits and throw-over life rafts with launching instructions and escape-to-sea ladders are provided as a means of escape. The life rafts can be deployed in two ways, manually thrown overboard or davit launched. If the decision is made to manually deploy the life raft, simply unlatch the straps and throw the life raft overboard. Pulling on this painter line will inflate the raft. Use the ladders to descend to the life raft. If the davit is to be used, unlatch the retaining straps and remove this flap to reveal the attachment shackle. Using the handle provided, rotate the davit across and attach the hook to the attachment shackle. The hook is locked in place by moving both levers up. If required, the line can be slackened by releasing the brake. Again, using the handle provided, raise the life raft from its cradle so it is above the handrail. Remove the handle and place into the davit slew point. Rotate the davit until the life raft is at the correct area for accessing. At this point, you should attach the bowsing lines at each end of the container to the handrails. 
swing the raft overboard. Once the raft is over the side of the vessel, fully pull out the red webbing painter line to inflate the raft. Once all personnel are on board, the bowsing lines and painter line should be released or cut before pulling on the descent handle to lower the raft to sea. The hook will automatically release once the raft is on the water. In your cabin, there is a grab bag for each occupant. The grab bag contains a life jacket, smoke hood, flame and heat resistant gloves and a torch. Remember to complete your declaration form and return it to Heli Admin within one hour of your arrival. If any items are missing, notify the safety advisor who will have them replaced immediately. Your flight suit should be placed in your grab bag when you come on board. In the event of a muster and you are in or near your cabin, please bring your grab bag to your muster point. Smoking is restricted to two designated areas on board. These will be pointed out to you. Mobile phones are permitted on board and there is Wi-Fi available. However, no mobile phones or smartwatches are permitted outside the accommodation. You must not leave your phone on charge unattended. Remember not to use your mobile phone when moving around the vessel, especially up and down stairs. Blue Water operates a no jewellery policy. Earrings, finger rings, in fact any jewellery that presents a hazard shall not be worn at work. The only exceptions to this policy are non-metal strapped watches and open-ended copper bracelets worn for medical reasons. Slips, trips and falls are some of the most common incidents offshore, so be careful when moving about the vessel. Always keep at least one hand free for the handrail. In the event that an injury or illness does occur, there's a medic on board and the vessel has a sick bay with comprehensive facilities. All injuries and illnesses must be reported to your medic, irrespective of how minor they may appear. And remember, if you have any prescription medication, it must be declared to the medic when you come on board. The medic can be contacted on extension 177. Different alarms are transmitted throughout the vessel in an emergency. You'll find them detailed on the station bill. In noisy areas, the alarms are backed up by flashing lights. Alarms will always be followed by PA announcements, so listen carefully. This is the general alarm. In a general alarm situation, immediately stop what you are doing, make safe any equipment you are using, and unless you have emergency duties, go to your muster station. Non-essential personnel muster in either the non-smokers rec room or coffee shop corner. The alternative muster points are your designated lifeboats. Tea cards will also be placed outside your lifeboat. Fire team members report to EHQ and the emergency response team to the bridge. The alternative muster point for both fire team members and the medic team is on the bridge. If you find yourself at the aft of the vessel and unable to reach your assigned muster point, there is the aft TR. At your muster point, turn your T-card to let your muster checker know you are there. Never turn another person's card. If you are in or passing your cabin, take your grab bag with you. Remember to wear warm clothing. This is the prepare to abandon alarm. On hearing this, listen to PA announcements for guidance. Once muster numbers have been reconfirmed to the ECR, the OIM will give instruction to abandon, most likely by lifeboat or potentially helicopter proceed directly to your assigned lifeboat station. If required, there are immersion suits and life jackets at each lifeboat station. To don the life jacket, undo the waist and crotch clips and put on the jacket like a waistcoat. Attach the waist clip, locate the crotch strap and clip to this. Tighten as necessary. The waist belt can be tightened as required using the side straps. If you need to inflate the life jacket, pull either of the red toggles. Do not inflate your life jacket in the lifeboat. If the lifeboats are to be boarded, obey the instruction of the coxswain. 
As you enter the lifeboat, turn around and descend backwards. Once seated, locate the crotch strap and two shoulder straps. Clip them together. Tighten these once secure. If you discover any incident, such as a gas leak, chemical spill, flooding, smoke or fire, contact the bridge either by radio on Channel 2 or by dialing the emergency number 112. If neither are possible, operate the nearest MAC alarm. In the case of fire, if there is no personal danger, tackle the fire with the nearest suitable equipment. Remember, different types of fire require different extinguishers. If someone falls overboard, remove a life buoy from its housing and throw it towards the person in the water. Point at the person in the water and call out, Man Overboard! Have someone raise the alarm by contacting the bridge either by radio on channel 2 or by dialing the emergency number 112. Give them the person's location. Keep the man overboard in sight at all times. The control room will initiate the rescue response. If you witness, come across or are involved in a serious incident where someone has been injured, assess the risk, do what you can for the casualty, but do not move them unless there is immediate danger. Contact the bridge, either by radio on channel 2 or by dialing the emergency number 112. If neither are possible, operate the nearest MAC alarm. Do what you can to keep the living quarters clean and tidy. Although coveralls are allowed in the accommodation, they are not allowed in cabins. Boot covers must be worn. Keep all work clothes in your locker. A high standard of personal hygiene must be maintained at all times. Always use the hand sanitizer in the mess room before eating. Make sure that your clothes are washed regularly. There is a net bag in your cabin. Make sure it has the correct cabin number. Bags can be placed in the laundry chute, which you will find on each level of the accommodation. Cleaned laundry can be collected at the foot of the stairwell on the upper deck. Coveralls should be placed in the bin in the laundry. Before bagging up clothes for the laundry, always check your pockets for any tools or objects, as these can cause equipment damage, fire or injure laundry personnel. The vessel has a gym on board. If you wish to use the gym, you must complete a gym induction form, which you can obtain from the medic. Personal protective equipment, or PPE, must be worn at all times outside the accommodation. This means a minimum of fire retardant coveralls, safety footwear, safety helmet, glasses, gloves and hearing protection. Make sure you wear your coveralls over your boots. Additional hearing protection should be worn in all areas where signs indicate the need. Specific protective clothing must be worn dependent on the work you are doing. This will be detailed in your work permit instructions and task risk assessment. For certain jobs, a red hot, hot or cold work permit, a confined space entry certificate and or an isolation certificate will be required. If you have to use a permit, you will be given training. Before starting work, make sure you understand and follow all conditions of the permit. If in doubt, ask. If you are uncertain if a work permit is required for a specific job, ask your supervisor. As part of the integrated safe system of work, each task will require a task risk assessment to be completed. Even if you have carried out a similar task recently, review the assessment and operating procedures. Something may have changed. Okay. A toolbox talk will yeah. be carried out for all tasks with the work party and recorded. At the end of the shift, if the work has been completed, the permit must be signed off. If not, it can be suspended if required for the next shift. A face-to-face -face discussion is required with the area authority and shift change. Prevention of incidents is given very high priority by Blue Water. One of the most effective preventative measures is good housekeeping, tidy workplaces, clear walkways and safety exits, and clean deck surfaces.
extreme care must be taken when you are in the vicinity of cranes and hoists. Never walk or work underneath suspended loads and make sure all barriers are obeyed. A system of colour coding is in operation for lifting equipment. Only use equipment that displays the current colour. A banksman will be designated for all lifts and he will have no other duties at this time. If you have any doubts about any piece of lifting equipment, do not use it but report it immediately to your supervisor. For manual lifting, assess the weight of the load. Never lift an awkward or heavy load by yourself. Get someone to help you or use appropriate equipment. We don't want you to injure your back and neither do you. Make sure that a manual handling assessment has been completed before starting. Pay attention to all barriers and signs. They are there for a reason, so keep away. Blue Water operates an observation reporting system. If you identify any unsafe condition or action, please fill in an observation card. In addition, you can use the idea cards to highlight any improvements that could be made. These cards are reviewed by management and the safety committee and any feedback is posted on the notice board. Vessel management welcome everyone's input on improving safety on board. When engaged in any task, be alert to changes in working conditions. This could be a change in the weather, new personnel joining a work group, in fact, anything which affects the safe continuation of the job in hand. Remember, TOFs, time out for safety. If you have any concerns about the work being carried out, stop. Take time out and assess the impact of these changes. Remember, everyone has the right to intervene and stop any job they feel is unsafe. When handling chemicals, always wear appropriate protection and adhere to the cosh assessment controls which will form part of your permit. Chemicals used on the FPSO will be on the approved FPSO chemical permit. If you are using a chemical for any non-routine job, ensure it has been approved for use. If unsure, ask your supervisor. Minimising our impacts on the environment we work in is a key commitment of the Blue Water HSEQ policy. Care must be taken to prevent anything going to sea that has not been properly assessed and approved on the FPSO environmental permits. If you observe a spill to sea, oil on the sea surface, or any object in the sea that should not be there, report this to the control room as soon as possible. Never use the drains for the disposal of liquids. Always use the waste stations. Any chemicals which enter the drains will end up in the sea. In addition, any oil going in the non-recoverable section of the drains will also end up in the sea. Make sure you dispose of any liquid wastes properly. Proper management of waste generated on the vessel is vital for our health and safety and for the good of the environment that surrounds us and our families. All waste is carefully segregated to ensure its disposal poses the minimum risk to people and the environment. Never throw anything overboard and always place rubbish in the correct skip or container. That concludes this part of your safety induction. Remember the station bill details all the emergency instructions. Read them and if you have any doubts, contact your supervisor or safety advisor. Emergency drills and exercises are held regularly. Treat them as the real thing. They are conducted for your safety. No jewellery of any kind and only wear watches with plastic straps. No mobiles or smart watches outside the accommodation. Never walk under suspended loads. Learn how to use and implement the observation and idea cards. Remember, everyone has the right to intervene and stop any job or action they feel is unsafe or if there is any doubt. This vessel is a safe place to live and work and will remain so if everyone follows the rules. So, think safety and act safely at all times. Ask if you don't know or are unsure about anything. Remember, our work is never so urgent or important that we cannot take the time to do it safely. 
Enjoy your stay on boards.